working to connect a region of over 600 mil bridges between our lands. and you're watching ASEAN in Focus on tonight's headlines. We are honored to have Dr. Roland Roberts II on our show today. He is a Republican candidate for President of the United States in the upcoming 2024 elections. Plus, a search and rescue operation is currently underway for seven people, including four Australian tourists who are reported missing after their boat encountered severe weather conditions. An Australian man has been charged with making a fake bomb threat on a Malaysian Airlines flight from Sydney to Kuala Lumpur. And we have the latest from on the wildfires in Maui from our correspondents standing on the ground. And students from Sekola Perkumpulan Mandiri in Jakarta, Indonesia, put on a heartwarming performance to celebrate the 56th anniversary of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And we are honored tonight to have Dr. Roland Roberts II on our show. He is a Republican candidate for President of the United States in the upcoming 2024 elections. Dr. Roberts, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Let me start off right away with this question, Dr. Roberts, since we have a very uh, short program. Um, the United States is a diverse country with many different cultures and communities. How would you engage uh, with and address the needs and concerns of Filipino Americans who contribute significantly to your country? Well, they do contribute significantly. And I can tell you that uh, one of the things that America has to do better is to take the best of the cultures in our melting pot. So one of the great things about the Filipino Americans that they contribute is the sense of family. Very similar to Hispanic Latino communities, they understand the essence of family. And I believe that the strength of the family is strength of the nation. And so the fact that uh, they're able to contribute back, and then that leads to a strong economy, that leads to stronger national security, and uh, that is one way we can elevate Filipino voices as we strengthen marriages and homes and families in America. Mm -hmm. The United States, no, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or um, ASEAN plays a crucial role in shaping regional dynamics and fostering economic and diplomatic partnerships. How do you envision strengthening relations with ASEAN member countries and uh, leveraging these partnerships to address shared challenges such as trade, security, and environmental sustainability? Well, you know, that, that, that's, it's a complex uh, answer in the sense that uh, we have to make sure that countries that American businesses invest in have uh, are politically stable and secure mm -hmm. and uh, both socially, economically and politically. And uh, so we have to, as, as president, we have to help nations uh, as they desire to strengthen the political stability of their nations. Mm -hmm. now, obviously, especially in the uh, APAC region uh, in Southeast Asia. Yes. There are several key partners, obviously Philippines, Indonesia, that are critical Malaysia, uh, to the economic prosperity of the United States. Uh, we are, I think there's a great opportunity to grow, uh, especially as some American businesses are shying away from China, looking for other places. Uh, Vietnam has gotten a lot of manufacturing. And, and so I see that increasing in the years to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, which takes me to my next question, the international trade and economic partnerships are vital for America's prosperity. How do you plan to navigate these trade relationships with countries in Asia, particularly considering the diverse uh, economies within the region? Yeah, well, I wish it was a one-size-fits-all. It makes it a little bit easier. That's not how uh, that region works. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we have to take each country 
or the strengths that it has. Uh, part of what we have to do is showcase to U.S. businesses as well uh, what can be done. And I think there are partnerships and investments that can happen. So, uh, for example, uh, when it comes to manufacturing chips or manufacturing certain technology components uh, mm -hmm. that are very sustainable uh, and provide a great income for communities and, and people, mm -hmm. uh, there are certain countries uh, that that really lends itself to. So I think when you get into certain industries uh, that the United States is able to uh, participate in those and to help raise up industries uh, as well in, in these nations. So we certainly look to shift and balance out a lot of our uh, deficits. Right now we are at a $400 billion deficit with China trade deficit, which uh, was the crux of the U.S.-China trade war, mm -hmm. which I addressed in the Great Hall of in Beijing in 2017. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I believe that we, using Southeast Asia, uh, can, uh, can, can spread that around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the Asia-Pacific region, or should we say the Indo-Pacific region, is uh, characterized by... Uh, uh, range of security challenges, and that includes, of course, the territorial dispute, among others, uh, nuclear proliferation concerns, emerging cyber threats. Uh, how would your administration approach these regional, uh, the regional security and cooperation, working with allies and partners in ASEAN or Asia to ensure stability and address uh, these complex security issues? My Southeast Asia foreign policy for the United States will be that I respect the sovereignty of nations first. So we will not intervene in their culture, in how they want to do things, their form of government. I don't believe in forcing everyone to look like America. We, we I appreciate the culture and respect sovereignty. That said, uh, we have to protect American interests wherever they are in the world. If we are having cyber threats, AI weapons uh, threats against the United States, if we have other uh, or military threats or alliances that uh, are considered a threat, uh, that is something that would have to be addressed. But I think that that is in the best interest of uh, the Southeast Asia countries. I think most, most of them would welcome uh, our joint efforts and of course, uh, you know, we don't impose, that's why we respect the property of nations. But I want the United States to be a good partner. One of the reasons I'm running for president is because we have not uh, been true to our word. America has had a character problem, both to her own citizens and to the nations of the world. Whether we enter into an agreement under one context and pretense, and then uh, switch or change the rules of the game as we go along, move the goalpost. And I want to restore that confidence in American agreements, and we have an agreement with the Roberts administration to be count on it. Mm -hmm. So let me just ask this. How, how do you feel about the uh, recent or the present challenges that the uh, Asia Pacific or the uh, Southeast Asian nations face in the Taiwan Strait? Well, that's one of the issues that I believe also goes back to the sovereignty. The uh, U.S. has had a one kind of policy. Uh, and so when it comes to Taiwan, we obviously have key interests in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not want Taiwan to turn into another Russian Ukraine. And it's been a model that both China and the U.S. are watching closely because that's exactly what it would turn into. Mm -hmm. And there are no winners in that situation. Uh, I personally would not go in and I'm not trying to protect the the nation of Taiwan. I am protecting American interests in Taiwan. I actually think they need to solve uh, their differences uh, on their own. Uh -huh. But we have to protect American interests. Now, if then people groups came to us uh, such as Taiwan and said, we want more, want more of this, then the United States could look at that. But at this time, we certainly view it as a one China uh, policy. I would not want, as President of the United States, I don't want, if one state gets bad at uh, my administration, I don't want them going to China and, and Texas can, uh, 
you know, China coming over here and fighting for Texas against the rest of the United States. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I view that that's what the United States involved in Taiwan would be. Uh, but I can tell you the other line for us is to, when there's human rights violations, when there are human atrocities uh, that take place, that America does uh, step in or should step in to help protect people because we're all citizens of the human race. Mm -hmm. So with the, I'm sure you've heard about the recent encounter of uh, Philippine boats and vessels in the South China Sea or West Philippine Sea. Um, how do you react to that? Yeah, I go back to in, the disputes when it comes to bodies of water, both at the Taiwan Strait and, and in these situations. When one country plays by the rules of the international community, and, and other nations do not, if they do not recognize those laws and abide by them, that's what is creating these conflicts. And uh, obviously the United States does respect international law and follows uh, that. So it goes back to a rules-based order. And I think for the safety and security of the world, it is the best way to operate. The rules-based order is the best way forward. That way, no one's imposing. These are cons uh, international consensus of how do we coexist with your sovereignty and respecting others' sovereignty without imposing and enforcing. Climate change is also a global challenge that requires collective action. Uh, many countries in the Asia-Pacific region are vulnerable to its effects, as we know. How do you envision the U.S. Uh, collaborating with nations in Asia, including ASEAN members, to address climate change and promote sustainable development? You know, I really want to help change the narrative away from climate to environment. Uh, one of the problems when we look at climate is we always look at it in a snapshot of a segment of time. It may be even in a day, an intraday, uh, the, the, the range of index or uh, of rainfall and so forth. Same thing with winters. Uh, but if you start to extract, the longer you extrapolate that and you start looking at trends over the course of 100 years or 300 years, you actually start to see patterns. What we refer to as climate change because of the, uh, of course, it's always changing. But when you zoom out, you actually see that it's been a fairly consistent pattern throughout the recorded history that we have uh, on climate. Mm -hmm. So what we ha what we can focus on and where we can affect change, it's, it, you have to focus on what the problems you can solve. And environment is one that we greatly contribute to. We can have clean water. A lot of the wars in the future will be fought over clean water. We can have clean water. Uh, we have to breathe clean air and fresh air. Uh, these are fundamental to having healthy bodies. Uh, and some of the greatest nations uh, that contribute to pollution and that contribute to poor air quality uh, are the very countries that do not uh, engage or abide by international standard for fresh air, clean air, clean and clean water. So uh, it goes back to the very similar challenge with the uh, sovereignty and, and rules in international law and international water. Mm -hmm. But I can say that uh, I absolutely believe that we can and must do more to end our forest. Look at the fires in Maui. Uh, absolutely tragic what is yes. happening. Uh, but you cannot just take a hands-off approach to the environment. We are supposed to tend the earth. We have to manage the earth. We have to, if you don't clean the brush, the underbrush, then you create kindling uh, in forests. If you do not take care of the oceans, if you do not take care of our drinking water and of the air, uh, it does come back and arms our bodies with toxins. Uh, and then it creates poor performance. People are tired, they're depressed, they don't produce as much, and then national GDP is affected. It is an absolute system, uh, and you have to fix the cog. You're running for president in a field that includes figures like former President Donald Trump and current President uh, Biden. How do you envision setting yourself apart 
uh, from them and other potential candidates? You know, both of the candidates you mentioned and, and the others that are running are running as old school politicians. They're running business as usual. When we look around at the earth today, it is not business as usual. The U.S. is likely to be in a world war or at least a major war in the next year, 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a president that is strong on foreign policy, that is strong on international diplomacy, both. And uh, usually we get one or the other. Uh, and I believe that's we need a president that has character, someone that uh, nations can trust and respect. And uh, so I'm running because America needs God. I believe that uh, we need the blessing of God on America, that good policy alone will not fix our problems anymore, that politicians can't fix the problems that America has, and that even good government can't by itself fix our problem. We need divine help and divine blessing. And uh, with my presidency, we will have uh, And so that is why I'm running to fix our economy, reduce our debt, to secure a border, and to fix our immigration policy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have 40 million illegals in the United States. We have to give them uh, a path to citizenship and uh, integrate them into the United States so they do not have to hide in the shadows anymore. And then uh, we have to uh, secure the border. And then number three, we have to strengthen families. And I believe that if we do those three things, you, we will have a 22nd century America that is worthy of rest of the world following. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Roberts. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. We appreciate your insights on the challenges uh, facing the U.S. and the world and the vision for the future. We wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.